Hi guys, um, my sermon today is, first of all, I hope you're doing well and happy, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. We appreciate you, we love you. And look, for those who are grieving their mothers and have lost their mothers, we're praying for you that God will bring his peace and joy to your life today. And uh, I still have my mother, but I pray pray this um your day will be well and and the lord will give you much comfort and much peace in the missing don't neglect to think about the good memories that you had with your your mother and it, or if you're a mother and a strange from your children uh reach out to them today and get whatever you need to get worked out, worked out. Because you only have one, one uh, mother at the end of the day, one child in the family is one of the most important thing, things in this life. Aside from God, your family is the essential structure that God gave you to, um, to go through this life with. So... Um, work, work with them and you know try and find common ground there's there's always a way to work it out as long as there's life there's a way um, so I'm praying for you today and for those of us who do have their mothers and I pray that you have a wonderful and happy Mother's Day with your mother whatever you're doing um, today, my sermon is called Running Red. Um, it came from a song from the movie Waitress. No, not from the movie. From There was a movie, but the song came from the Broadway show Waitress. Um, it's, it came from a song called I Didn't. I didn't plan it, which, which um, I was listening to this morning, and God has a strange way of, of um, doing things, because I was originally gonna call this message, uh, the rescuer, um, or my rescuer, or something about rescuer, and I was listening to the song this morning, and this whole other level of revelation came to me so this sermon is called um running red let's pray father i bless you and i praise you speak to us speak speak through me lord god let rachel die and jesus live in your name i pray amen um, so, first I'm going to read a scripture, and then I'm going to, uh, read song lyrics, and then I'm going to read the quote from a novel that I wrote, um, a few years ago called The Soldier and the Stripper. Um, so... Let's get started. First, the scripture. Um, excuse me while I, while I um, get things up here. Things are queued up, but I just need to get them up on the screen. Um, So, so first, my scripture is taken from Romans 8.39. It says, Neither height, nor depth, nor anything else.
nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of Jesus our Lord. Um, another, another version says, neither height, neither height, nor depth, nor angels, nor demons, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things under the, above the earth, nor things above the earth, can ever separate us from the love of God. Um, that's the King James version, and I just read from the New International version. Um, and now I'm going to um, read the song lyrics. This is a song, as I said before, called "I Did I Didn't Plan It" from the Broadway show, Broadway musical Waitress. Um, okay. Um, the song lyrics read as this. Throw your rocks at me from your little glass house and then take and then take off running. You're no better than me. We've both made mistakes, haven't we? I won't undo what I'm doing. So sit in judgment of what makes us human. I don't I don't claim to be proud. But my head won't hang in shame. I didn't plan it. The but but the light turned red and I ran it and I'm and I'm still standing it's not what I wanted but now but now that it's right here I understand it A story written by my own hand, it's life biting right at your heels. I didn't plan it. It's finally something, but it's finally something to feel. Oh, I... Look up, look up, look around you. Ain't no, ain't, ain't no sense, ain't no, ain't no saints in here. We, baby, we're just all looking for a little less than crazy. I love that line. Down, down the road, you never thought you'd see. I didn't plan it. Taking back, I can't taking back taking back what's been taken for granted I can't stand it I'm, I'm sick of the way I'm waiting to break break free I needed saving
and a good mistake needed making. Maybe, maybe you needed the same thing. Something to feel. Something to race through your blood. And remind you you're here. To open your eyes and look around. And see. And see the sky. You're underground. And it goes back to the chorus. Uh, sorry for my uh, slow reading ability. Sometimes I, when reading off the screen, I go real, uh, I go really slow. I stumble and stuff. But I hope you got the gist of that song. And what I'm trying to say today is really simple. It's not long. This is not going to be a long thing. Um, sometimes we all have issues that think we think disqualify us. Uh, we all have fears. We all have failures. And God says um, um, that nothing can separate us from his love. There is nothing we could do, nothing we will ever do that will separate us, will make God not love us anymore. And a lot of people feel uh, disqualified. And I came to tell you today, you are not disqualified. You are not, um, you are not, um, disqualified. You are not unqualified. Your pain qualifies you for greatness. Your pain qualifies you for greatness. All those people that are judging you and saying, how could you do this? Um, they don't know your pain. They don't know how you feel. They don't know how how things are going for you. And he wants me to tell you simply today that there's hope and he loves you and you haven't gone too far for his grace. The Lord loves you so much that he is willing he sent me all the way from Toronto, Canada to tell you he wants you. He loves you and there's nothing that you could do, nothing that you will ever do, nothing that you have done that can, that can take away from his love or can add to it. Some people work their butts off trying to get God's approval, get God's love. There's nothing you can do more, nothing you can do less um, to make him love you. And he loves you. It doesn't matter what people want to say. It doesn't matter how people treat you. It doesn't matter whatever. Um, it doesn't matter whatever they do to you. God loves you. And his love will never change. He loves you now and forever and just, he, he is here to restore you. He wants to heal every broken place. And he says uh, to you today through me, stop fighting him. Stop saying, stop thinking you need to do this. You need to work for this ministry. You need to get your life right before you can come to him. He says in his word, he says, our righteousness is like filthy rags. And he is desperate for you today. He desperately wants to restore you, to pick you up, to heal you. And there is nothing that you could have done to 
to take away his love from you. And people may have abused you. People may have, have said all kinds of manner of things about you. But the Lord says you are victorious. The Lord says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. The Lord says he's crazy about you. He loves you with a passion and a reckless abandon. He will do anything for you. He will do everything he can to make sure you feel loved, to make sure you feel cherished. And the thing about God's love is, although it's infinite and never ending, some people take advantage of God's love. Like, think, oh, God love me. His grace will cover me. I don't have to change no, nothing. He loves me regardless. That's true, like I said. But as well, his love causes you, should cause you, to not be cavalier about it. It should cause you to set a standard in your life to say, you love me so much, I'm going to try my best to reflect you in, in the best way possible. And if I don't reflect, reflect you, I know you'll forgive me. His love and his grace is not a get out of jail free card. It's for us to know that yes, he loves us. Yes, he respects us respects us and yes he honors us he made us with unique gifts and talents but he also wants us to set his standard in our own lives and when you set his standard in your own life he can he can work with you but if you're like so cav cavalier about it and you're like, oh, he loves me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't work like that. He said, um, Paul said, should I sin so that grace may, may, may abound? And he, he answered his own question. He says, no, God forbid we shouldn't sin. Uh, but if we do sin, he wants us to know his grace is sufficient. Saints, the Lord wants you to know today that whatever hell you've gone through, whatever pit you've gone through, His love and His grace is sufficient to pull you out of it. And there's no hell that anybody made to put you in, no heaven that anybody made to put you in. Only God has the power to put you in those places. And he will put people in your life that will restore you, that will love you, that will help guide you with his holy guidance. I'm not saying he won't, but the first judge of you is God. I, a few years ago, I made t-shirts and I said, on one of those t-shirts, they have funny sayings. Uh, funny God sayings on them um, and one of those t-shirts says God loved most and judges least um, and another one said I remember um, God put me here and on the back it said and he's the only one who can take me out they can't those people that are judging you, those people that are churchy and think they know it all, they don't know it all. They are still searching. They are still seeking like you are. But sometimes people are afraid to admit that they're broken, that they need God. But God needs a broken and a contrite heart. He will not despise it, his word says. And people need to know 
that God forgives, God still heals, God still restores, and he is desperate to restore you today. He sees your pain. He sees what you're going through. He sees all the mess that you've gotten yourself in, and he wants you to grab onto his lifeline and to know that you're not forgotten, that you are not alone, that you are not garbage, that he's going to use your scars and turn them and turn them into greatness. Some people would say he's going to use your scars and turn them to stars, your test into a testimony, but just hold on. This crushing is not forever. And then within those grapes, are, you're going to come out as fine wine that ages with time. And that that is so uh, sweet to the taste. You are going to be potent for people. This crushing that you're going through is going to be your the catalyst that will catapult you into where God wants you to be. He's crushing you so he can use you. He's, he's making something out of this mess. The good stuff, the bad stuff, everything. He's, he's turning this around for good. And if you didn't, if you saw the red light and went into it anyway, He'll forgive you and he'll restore you. He's into restoration. He's into restoration. And he, he, just, he just wants you to know today that he is God and he loves you. And he sees you. You are not invisible. You are not alone. You are not forgotten. You are not broken. I heard an elder at my church that they say something powerful. She said, brokenness is a choice. You have to choose to um, stay broken. People can do all kinds of crazy things to you, but it's how you respond to it. Respond with peace and respond with joy and know that God sees and one day he will rep repay. All those people that are talking about you will have to one day answer to God and he will judge them appropriately. And his judgment will be so much more than whatever anger, whatever revenge you can uh, dish out. Don't go for revenge, go for love. God sees that and he knows it. He knows all the things that you've gone through and not said anything and he will repay you for what you went through in private, he will, he will re repay you openly. So hold tight and be strong because the Lord sees you and he loves you. Lord Jesus, I pray that this word permeated every soul, every heart, every mind. Father, I bless you for every soul that is hearing this. I declare that they will rise up and be great. I declare that no weapon formed against them shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against them you shall condemn. In the name of Jesus, I speak release of joy, release of peace, release of favor on them. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, guys. Oh! I forgot to quote my novel. <laughs> I was going to end without quoting my novel. Anyway, I'll end and then I'll quote my novel and then I'll sign off. Um, okay, guys, I'll see you later. Now, the quote from my novel, um, because the, the, um, the song mentions something about fear that we need something to fear and some and something from my novel jumped out at me and I just wanted to read that. 
So the message is going to be over after this. Oh, a quote from my novel, The Soldier and the Stripper. Um, which is doing very well on Inkit.com, by the way. Um, So, the quote from my novel about fear is, fear is a strange thing when you're alone in the dark, when the walls are closing in around you, and you feel like your world is about to explode. At the same time, Fear can also be comforting, like a security blanket, or even a or even a good friend who will stop you from doing something stupid like jumping off a bridge or running from someone who's trying to do you harm. Don't let your fears stop you. Let them propel you. Feel the fear but do it afraid. That's what I have to say. Say, yes, I, I feel afraid. Yes, I am afraid. But I'm going to do it anyway. Because when God sees courage, he honors that. And he will give you the strength. His strength is made perfect in your weakness. Remember that? I'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Take care. Love you and we'll be praying for you.